Welcome to the Machine Room Podcast. You're looking at a very heroic, thoughtful picture of me and a picture of Rachel seducing you with her eyes as we both don't want to be on camera right now. It doesn't matter. It's a podcast. You're not supposed to look at us. Just hear us. That's all that matters. As long as these voices... uh. I was going to say urinate, serenate. <laughs> as long as these voices urinate your soul, we're good. Well, <laughs> I think that's a new tagline. Machine Room Podcast, where our voices, our voices urinate your soul. <laughs> it's been a long as freaking time but you know what we do this whenever the fuck we feel like it welcome back to the machine room podcast i'm nastradamus she's hammer venus and this is an episode where we're gonna talk retro gaming somehow it's gonna lead to john wick it always does everything does there should be a retro game of john wick Every answer to life's question is in the first three chapters of John Wick. That's it. Right now, they just they just gave us a little snippet. They still got more to tell us and show us. And we thought the Matrix was all the answers. Oh. Yes. And and people didn't wake up enough, so. Keanu continued his story with John Wick. For a second there, I thought he had books, and I was like, where are they? (laughs) What are they called? I'm reading them. You know who did write a book? My... High school teacher. I just, I just found out she. It was a. It's a children's book, and I just found out she wrote a children's book, and it was highly acclaimed. And now I need to get my hands on it. Teachers are doing things. I got a physics. I got a physics teacher who ended up on like, um. Good Morning America or something and it's like big on TikTok and now I got another teacher who wrote a book. The teachers are doing things. What are the students doing? He can't hear you? Oh shit, don't tell me this whole it shows up right here. Yeah. Alright, bye bye. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. Say something, girl. Bye bye now. <laughs> Say something, girl. Bye bye now. <laughs> Say something, girl. Bye bye now. Thank you. Say something, girl. Get out of here. Come on. It's t- it shows right here. Get You're here. talking. Come on. It shows right here. You're talking. It shows right here. You're talking. The other person is me, Machine Room Podcast. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, it's right there, though.
How about now? Well, here in the Machine Room Podcast, we like to uh, fuck up, and it's mostly on me, so I greatly apologize, I think because the audio is coming out through this other speaker instead of this speaker, and go ahead, talk now. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, hey, please. Hello. Hello. It's bullshit because it shows right here the NDI of your voice coming out. Yeah, but can you check it on Twitch? See, now we good. See, this now is we good. Okay, good. This is the same thing that happened. Remember the last time my webcam NDI didn't show up? Right. And I had to use my own. But Why your is that? audio was still good. You know what? Whatever, man. Okay, welcome to the real <laughs> Machine Room Podcast. <laughs> the first half of this, or not the first half, but the first whatever minutes of this podcast was actually me talking to you. So I want you to go back and then fill in the conversation. You play as Hammer Venus. That's how we're gonna play that out. So now that we're into the actual podcast, um, hi, I'm Nasher Thomas, <laughs> and this is officially Hammer Venus, and we're officially you. good. We're officially the Machine Room Podcast. Yes, I don't remember what we were talking about. We were talking about all things leading to John Wick. Right, right, and how, how the. The movies are already um, trying to wake us up and everything. And then you said that you mistakenly said that he wrote a book. And then I said, oh, you know who wrote a book? A uh, teacher of mine from high school. Mm-hmm. And then I was talking about how, like, I know two teachers so far who are, like, successful. And all the students are just students. I don't want to say they're successful. There's, there's one person I know that no sign... Of this, but she and she's very success. She's a successful photographer here, and she'll mostly do oh, wow. like, yeah, like she mostly does like wedding photographies or you know engagements and shit like that. But she's really, really good at it. Who used to take pictures of you guys, like when y'all were at the Bean and stuff downtown? Oh, uh, like when it was uh, me and the crew. Yeah. Oh, that was. That was the ones interviewing us. So the two high, uh, not high school, the two college girls that interview us for their uh, college magazine or whatever. They are the, they're the ones that took those pictures. Oh wow, they were good, right? Mm-hmm. I just just have people follow me and take pictures. I don't have good angles, except for this one right here. If you're watching Better this video, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good angle right there. Imagine me with a beer back then. I think, I think I should have peaked now, not then. What do you mean, like as far as like being famous? Oh yeah, because that's exactly what happened to me. I got famous, right? <laughs> <laughs> I never got famous. I got attention, but I never got famous. Hey, King Diabetes gave us some bits. And in Twitch lingo, that means he's supporting us a little bit. And we thank you for that. Well, thank you for being here. Wait, thank you for the bits. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for dealing with our shit that I was just talking to my damn self for the beginning. It's very it's very <laughs> embarrassing, man. It was very embarrassing. Because I, I thought I was looking here and I was like, all right, the bar's moving. We good. Nope. 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 Stop. Stop. Fuck that. Bless you. Thank you. 
bless you and also bless those people who did that tmnt game that just came out today what a ride earlier we were playing it on my stream um follow me nash Adamus. uh and uh, we were, what, five deep with you, right? Oh, yeah, almost six. Almost six. Well, we were we were five deep. And then uh, our friend Scooby's kid said, fuck y'all, and left. Decided to play with his wrestling toys and have a big-ass WrestleMania event in the background that we could hear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we just kept going, but... It was a really, really fun game. I, I had a blast. And, you know, it just shows you that the retro feel is still is still in. And there's a big market in that. Like, indie games. The indie games are, are very, very, very fun. Very retro. And um, Game Pass is a great pay, place for that shit. Because they really stock up on all those retro kind of indie games. So does uh, Steam on the computer. Steam as well, yeah, because it's the Steam same has, shit. Yeah. Most, of, most of those start there, and then they go on to the other consoles. But yeah, Steam as well. I wish I, I had love Steam Deck. Retro Steam games that come out, like uh, the one that the guys that made Duke Nukem 3D made. What the fuck is it called? I think they finally put that on the Xbox, too. Did they really? Yeah, I think so. I know which one you're talking about. Hang on, let me look. Eon something, right? Eon Flux. Eon. <laughs> no. Eon Flux is my shit. Eon Flux. Ion right. Fury. That's what it's there called. There you go. Yeah, I think that did. I think that did go on there. Okay, yeah. Thanks, but you probably sir. can't use the cheat codes. Oh, for sure not. And then they made another one called Wrath um, Ion of Ruin. And that one was hard as fuck when I quit playing it. <laughs> but, I haven't yeah. finished. You remind me, I haven't finished Doom Eternal. I haven't either. It was really hard. Yeah, I got stuck I, somewhere I, where it was just... Split. Yeah. And I just... bought, like, the most expensive version that came out, like, the $100 version. Ooh, shit. And I barely played it. I would be mad, too, if I spent $100 and they won't let me keep going. <laughs> It was so hard. You're just running around for like, dear I life. Unload an entire clip into one of those red ball looking dudes. And he didn't even like hurt him. And there's like five of them. I'm like, God damn. I'm going See, to that's, bed. that's what we're doing. We're doing a retro game. It's going to be on the style of like Doom and uh, Duke Nukem and whatnot. And it's Hell this yeah. guy who's just going around shooting big red balls. <laughs> I'm saying like it's this attack of just big ass balls and the bosses are just this big fucking veiny ass penises. Shit. Bless you. Thank you. And you just got to blow up these dicks and that's what we're going to call the uh, the game. <laughs> blow oh, job. <laughs> I'm down. Tagline, we're going to blow some dicks. There you go. <laughs> It'll sell on Steam. Steam sells everything, man. I've seen they games do. where it's like, you know, banging girls and shit. I'm like, what? Is that that game that D-Black plays? Is that on Steam? Uh, no, actually, I heard that Bone Town was like, like, you had to know where to get it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Everybody go play Bone Town. If it's still out there and exists, I don't know. I think D Black's the only one who probably, he he probably low key made the game and then acted like he didn't. Exactly. Hey yo, this this is my game. I mean, this is a game I found and it's cool. And <laughs> I'm gonna go over here and find this girl and Nick Nick Nick. I'm gonna fuck this bitch instead of uh, Jackie Chan. I'm D Black. This is my game. <laughs> To this day, if you guys don't know, Jackie Chan had a game. It was like Jackie Chan fight something. It was a fighting game with Jackie Chan. It was like way before mm -hmm. even Jackie Chan blew up. But apparently he had it here. And there was like three or four versions of Jackie Chan in this game. Plus other people in his movies. 
it's kind of looked like how the Street Fighter, the movie game was made, or how the Mortal Kombat games were made back then, where they used real life people and you know yeah. fighting. And right off in the beginning, in the intro, is just Jackie Chan and punching the screen, and he's just like, "Hi, I'm Jackie Chan, and this is my game." And I was like, "This is the best <laughs> intro." You gotta say it right though. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jackie Chan, and this is my game. <laughs> and then, psh, just punch you in the face. Oh, it was great. I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, Jackie. <laughs> Everybody should do that. You think the fucking Mike Tyson punch out should have been like that? Hi, Mike Tyson, this is my game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sound just like him. Diabetes talk about Jackie Chan's Thumb Master. That's another one. That was more of a, uh, not cross plat, not not a not a. It was a, like a like a. It was a beat 'em up game. Not a fighting game like this one, but that one was really dope. And I only played that one like burnt. Like I had like a burnt copy of it or something. I don't know. Like the game didn't. I didn't understand where these games came from because it was like Jackie Chan, but it was before Jackie Chan became big. At least that I know of. I never played any of those, but I did play um, Iron and Blood on PlayStation, which was one of the Dragon. Uh, oh, what do you call that shit? What's the shit that the nerds play? The you role playing the that game. The nerds play? Yeah, the role playing game. RPG? Dungeons and Dragons. Oh. It was a Dungeons and Dragons game, fighter game for PlayStation called Iron and Blood, and that was fucking fun. Were you a mage? You could be anybody. Stunt Master was 1999. He was big by that time. Well, I didn't see that game anywhere. They didn't advertise that shit in my face. Should have. What was what was around 99? Max Payne. When did Max Payne come out? That's a good question. I think that was past 99. I remember when Max Payne 2 was coming out. The fucking marketing for that was beautiful. It was like a movie coming out. Hell yeah. It hyped me up so much. Seeing that billboard up there was like Max Payne 2. The fall of Max Payne. Max Payne came out in 2001. Okay. So yeah, that's way past that. That was way past that. And it's funny how that game now is considered retro. There you go. Mm Mm-hmm. Everything new is old. That's why now the um, the big uh, hype is the new uh, PlayStation Plus, where they had a game catalog because you know they're trying to do their own Game Pass thing, but pff, way more expensive. And they have some PS One games on the list. I saw it was a small, but it just started, <laughs> so maybe they'll you know build up and get more and more stuff in there. But yeah, people are excited to play old. PlayStation games on their uh, consoles now. I gotta admit, that was the only reason that I bought a PlayStation, besides wanting to play Spider-Man on PS4, is I wanted to play, like, retro Metal Gear Solid and uh, God of War, shit like that. They had God of War, like, 3, but they didn't have the first two, and then they had... Metal Gear, like, 2 and up, but they didn't have the first one, and that was the only one I wanted to play. So I really hope they do build their um, their catalog up. They have those... I know they have a majority of all the God of Wars and probably the Metal Gear Solid as well on the PlayStation... When they had PlayStation Now, which was their, like, Game Pass kind of thing. Uh, but now with this even more bigger catalog and, and upgrade with their plus then yeah I, I could see that I could see that showing up on that list F- for I mean I'm gonna try it because if you're already a plus member you just upgrade and just pay the difference right and I already checked and it's just like a like a twenty dollar whatever so I just gotta wait until I can but um I'll only have it for four months until it wants to renew or not it wants to until it renews and the for that platinum, for the platinum grill chain version, 
It's one hundred nineteen dollars a year. Jesus. Yeah, that's a lot. That's too Ain't much. Got that. Yeah, me, so I'm gonna make sure that that shit doesn't. Up. I'm gonna make sure that doesn't renew. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nope. No oh way. My God. That's crazy. Right? For one I'm year. A, for one year, a hundred nineteen dollars. Can't you get like Netflix for fifty dollars for a year? Could you? I know you used to be able to, like back when you used to have to buy those cards for your play, your uh, Xbox. Mm hmm. And you put the the Netflix card on your Xbox. I used to buy those for like fifty bucks for the whole year. I don't know now because you know the subscription service is like twenty dollars for the is that right? for the full thing. There forever. I'm still I'm They're... still. 100% loyal to that thing. I know a lot of people have been like dissing it or whatever. I have no problems. I still mostly watch my stuff off of Netflix. Still got a lot of shit to watch off of that stuff. So I never understood the there's nothing good on there. And, and I go on there and I'm like, look at all this great shit they're making. <laughs> That's me. I like tend to look for stuff that I've seen before that I want to watch again. And Sometimes they have good stuff, but they have a lot of new stuff to watch, especially original programming. I think we talked about this before, but it's really hard for me to want to watch something new. Like, I have to be in the right mindset. I have to be, like, open-minded and accepting and... On drugs. Curious. Yes, possibly on drugs. <laughs> Like, everybody keeps talking about the new season of Stranger Things. And I had, like, my finger on the button the other day to watch it, and I ended up watching something else. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched it yet myself. Plus, I know that's just, like, a part one of it. And the next part is in, like, next month. Yeah. So, so I want to just wait for all of it to drop. Yeah. So I think I'm going to... Wait till next month. But still, like, that and uh, I was dog watching for this guy and he was talking about how good Halo is. Ooh. <laughs> once again, I had my finger on the button. I could have watched Halo and then I watched Old instead, which is a good movie. Oh. Except the dialogue. Shit, shit, shit. Okay. You want to talk about both of those things? Of course. Uh -huh. Hold on. Side Beater said, uh, Rachel, I know how you feel. I'm watching Stranger Things Part 2 to drop some kind of watch the shit one day. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm just waiting for it to go down. The thing is, okay, the thing is, like, it's different now than it was back then. As in, oh, shit, I need to watch this because there's no other way for me to watch it as it's happening. Right. But now it's like, I can watch this whenever, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I get it. No, I, I get it also because I was, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I was real keen on the whole like weekly watching these shows on like Disney Plus when it came to like Mando or any of the MCU stuff. Cause that was real cool and I didn't want shit to get spoiled for me. Yeah, um, if, you have, if you have Twitter, there, somebody's gonna ruin it on Twitter. Every fucking time, boy. It's every, like you just. Like as soon as it drops, they start dropping spoilers. Yep. <sighs> but. On these other, I'm surprised, like, on Stranger Things side, like, nothing's been really spoiled like crazy for me. I've, like, heard, like, there's, like, some things that happen, but I'm trying not to, like, dive into it or buy into it so they're just gonna spoil it. But I know, like, when I watch it and I see what happens, I'm gonna be like, that's what they're talking about. Oh, that's it. Well, I'm gonna... The now, I was fortunate with the whole Halo thing because not most people were all up on it. So when I watched it, nothing was spoiled until one time it was spoiled. And I think it was, I think it was our friend Peyton that spoiled that shit for me. Fucker. Yeah, he gave it to me. I was like, well, I didn't watch this week yet, buddy. But <laughs> fuck it. It was at the point where I was like, I didn't care. Um, I enjoyed it. 
mm-hmm. to a point. Like the first episode right off the bat, it was already like set the mood for the whole thing. It was like it was really dope because you got to see like Master Chief and them get down, and that was like that's really the best part of the whole series is seeing them get down. The rest was a big buildup that I saw coming. Already? Was it a new day or something? But I just unlocked it earlier. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, where was I? Oh, I, I saw the ending coming. I knew where it was kind of going. You know, it was kind of a little bit cliche. I liked it. There was a side story. Because it felt like a side story. Maybe it's m- more important later. Even though I don't know if there is going to be a second season. But there was a side story and a character I could live without. Didn't care about it. But from the get-go, Master Chief's revealed. And there's this whole thing. And he's trying to like find himself. And blah, 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 blah. And the introduction of like Cortana. And I saw where it was going. I love the action scene. I get what they were going for. And I get like why they kept showing this guy's fucking face. Because you need a lot of emotion. And you can't do that much from the helmet. Though I will counter that back with. Have you guys seen The Mandalorian? You can see a lot of emotion. And this guy hasn't Mm -hmm. shown his face only like what? Twice in that whole series? What about V Uh, Vendetta? V for Vendetta is another one. That guy does mm-hmm. Questioning that too. Is that even Hugo weaving in that fucking shit throughout the whole movie? That's what I want to know. Because <laughs> if you read up about it, the stuntman played him several times. Right? Did he just like James Earl Jones it and just, <laughs> just voice the whole the thing? Work? Yeah. I mean, it'll work. I won't be mad. I won't be mad. Like, pff, that's not even him. I wouldn't give a fuck, you know, because it's all about. It's not like. It's, is that's like same that's like me saying like oh that's not really the fucking guy uh, that's not really the fucking guy as Ultimus Prime he's just voicing this Autobot that's <laughs> not really him but anyways I I get what they were going for and blah blah so it's you know it is what it is it didn't suck completely I enjoyed it I love the action the action was real great I would love to see what happens next of course because of how it ended to the point where I saw like I saw it coming and I want to know what's going to happen next if this all led to it just being like okay this is going to be him completely in the fucking master chief mode then I'm all for that but yeah I could see why people were like and I hate saying like a lot. I can see why people were mad that just go with the fucking lore and follow that and blah, blah. But they were setting up because this is supposed to be the origin of Master Chief, Cortana, the whole fucking. Um, what's the, the bad guys called again? I forgot the Covenant, which was on point because they looked exactly like the game. Everybody looked exactly like like the game. And and some of the story bases of the game were there, but there was some new things added. They, they, they play with it and made themselves. It's an adaptation. And of course you and I understand that adaptations happen and you're free to do stuff. Mm -hmm. As long as you get that little, you know, as long as you get the feel of it, that's why me and you like cowboy bebop. It does. It's not fucking awful. It's a good adaptation of a freaking anime. Plus what we were talking about before the, uh, the new, um, Ninja Turtle movies that they made, the CGI ones. Mm-hmm. I love those movies. I had a blast, but people just shit on them. They do because they just wanted to. Why can't we get the guys in the suits and blah blah? I did find the first Ninja Turtle movie in that elevator scene where they're about to go up and face the Shredder, mm-hmm. and they're there and they're fucking like they're like pumped, but they're also scared. And then as a teenage Ninja Turtle fashion, they start freaking beatboxing to get hyped. Yes. Come on. That was like the perfect freaking that represented and showed what the Ninja Turtles are. And I thought the movie was really, 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 really. Yeah. MC Mikey. (laughs) I thought, I thought the movie was really, really good. Oh, Magnolia Overdrive, but he made the mocap for Optimus. Did the voice really do it? Or are you just joking with me? Because if he did, that's freaking awesome. 
What's the That's guy like saying the, the Thor movie, the rock dude, Korg, is that his name? Uh-huh. That guy actually did the motion capture for him, too. Yeah, Taika Waititi did do yeah. that. I can never pronounce his name. Taika, Taika Waititi. You just Watch kidding? No, nah, now, now in my lore, that the voice of Ultima is actually oh, mo-capped. He did the whole fight scene and everything. He did the rolls and all that. Tuck and roll. Hey, it's funny. I, I choose um, Transformers as uh, an example, and then Hugo Reaving voiced Megatron in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. So you telling me that Megatron wasn't exactly Hugo Weaving in a fucking Decepticon suit? <laughs> I'm mad. Should be mad. I'm mad. People were mad when Hugo Weaving was picked to voice Megatron. I thought like, he did perfect. Yeah, they were like, they should have got the original actor. But then I was thinking, like, if I heard that voice on a movie, I, I, I don't think I would have taken it seriously. <laughs> There's a distinct voice about Optimus Prime that's just perfect. But that yeah, voice yeah. for Megatron and the live action movie is not really threatening or serious. I thought he did great. I love Hugo waving. Everything what, he you, does is old. Yeah, Hugo, Hugo, Hugo knocked it off the park as fucking Megatron. Okay. That'd be right. We were talking about Ninja Turtles. Those Ninja Turtles movies are good and 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 are, but it's like it's 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 the whole thing about retro nostalgia. You know, people love how things were and they wanted to recapture that shit. Um, those movies, people didn't like how they looked, but I don't know, man. Like I was I was cool with it. I was cool with it. I loved that. Like yeah, their camaraderie and. How they got along and how they went about going about doing things, and I just thought it was perfect. It was more like the uh, the old cartoon that we had as kids. The making of it, I heard, was a bitch, and it was not very enjoyable. And there were really bad conditions and shit. Really, and didn't get didn't get paid much. Yeah, yeah, you could hear you could hear one of the guys talk about it. The one who played uh. That that was on mocap too. The one who did Raphael, he was the dude. Actually, that guy now is on Amazon as a Reacher in the Reacher series. I heard like an interview or something with him talking about how they paid really shitty. Yeah, yeah. He said he said it was just it was it was bad. When that's why like nobody nobody wanted to come back. I think he did both of them. I well, think. didn't uh, Johnny Knoxville do the first one, but not the second one? I think so, right? Yeah, he was one of the turtles, wasn't he? He was Leonardo. Hmm, he was Leo. That second one was fire. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Bebop and Rocksteady, baby. That was the best they thing. They were perfect. They were perfect. It was just a cartoon brought to life. There was a lot of hate for Megan Fox. I hate. I, look, I have to admit, I hated Megan Fox back then too. I had to admit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hated I the Fox. I don't have any. I don't have any issues with her. I did. I don't know why. I hated the Fox, but now I'm cool with the Fox. You know what I hate? I hated that they didn't continue having Megan Fox in the Transformers movies because it fucked it all up for me. Like I in the third movie. Yeah, in the third movie, I was like, "Who the fuck is this bitch?" Where's the Megan Fox <laughs> character? And you telling me that Sam w Wiki is just pulling these models like constantly? I call bullshit. I call bullshit too. I could believe Megan Fox. They were in high school together, blah, 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 blah. But then he went off and caught whoever the hell this other girl is. And there was no connection for me. Like that girl to me was like, I don't care what happens to you, you know? Like Sam <laughs> Wiki, I want you to do you. But I would have felt more if it was still Megan Fox character, which I forgot what her name was because it was something creative and weird and new if her character was in that movie and she was being held captive still in new in uh chicago and he had to go get sandwich wiki and blah 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 sandwich wiki had to go get her and blah 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 then i would have been like yeah save that chick but in this movie i was just like yeah man go get her whatever uh where's the autobots and let's fight 
Saxy! It's not every day we get Saxy in here. What up, Gina? Michaela Baines, that was her name. Michaela. 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 There you go. Michaela Baines. There you go. Michaela. Yeah, I care more about Michaela than anything. More about Michaela than. Did I play the, the. We did play the new TMNT game earlier. We beat the shit out of it, and it was very, very, very fun. Yeah, I definitely play it again. Yes. And this is why we're talking about retro gaming. Those people who did that game also did the um, Streets of Rage 4 game, which everybody knows, those close to me, that Streets of Rage is one of my favorite beat em ups of all time. Hell yeah. And when they did Street of Rage 4, you can tell the love behind it. Like they were fans and they loved the material and they put everything. And when we played the Ninja Turtle game, it's the same kind of love in there, especially at the end. When we saw the final final balls, we're like, yeah, these motherfuckers were big fans. <laughs> they had, had shit thrown in there that I didn't even know about. Like, I didn't. Like, I still don't know who those... Shit. I don't know who those little people were that we kept fucking free. The little dwarves with the, yeah. with the trolley hair. I had no idea. No idea. And and then the frog motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much Easter eggs in that stuff. I, I'm, I'm kind of... I kind of feel bad. Because, I, you know, I, I watched, watched the show when I was a kid. But I don't remember that much. Besides the turtles, Shredder... Uh, Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady and whatnot, but on Baxter, you can't forget Baxter. It's just, you can't forget Baxter and Krang. You can't. Shredder. The Rat King was a bitch to fight. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't Wait. fight him. Oh, yeah. You weren't there yet. I wasn't there yet. No, you came, no. you came when when we needed someone in the clutch. <laughs> and you didn't come like any... You didn't come as April. No, you was like, nah, they need a real one. And you came yes. as Splinter. That's what's up. <laughs> You fuck shit up. No, but it's definitely fun if you haven't played it yet. You can get it on the Game Pass on Xbox. Looking at Gina. We're looking at you. It's available on her. everything. Steam. I don't know, Steam. But PC, uh, Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Nintendo 64, Super NES, Sega Genesis, um... Uh, ColecoVision, uh, Atari. It's available on everything. And, uh, and we highly Nintendo recommend it. 3D. Yeah. If it's on Game Pass, you good. The game is there, available for you. Just fucking download it. If, it, if you don't have the Xbox or Game Pass or PC with a Game Pass, then you can get the game. It's just $25, though. That's what's great about these guys. They don't sell it for, like, fucking 60 bucks. Just 25 it's a good one. But if Very you have fun. Game Pass, you don't have to buy it. Because I'm cheap. Same, man. I don't know why people don't jump jump on the stadia. Oh my god, is that even is that still a thing? It is still a thing. It's still a thing. <clears throat> I don't know any I remember I tried it too. I was like, let me try it. And then I saw the selection. I was like, alright, this is alright. And then I just like, alright, I'm done with this. Because I was never gonna use it. I was never going to use it. I wish I would love to have a Steam Deck because I have Steam games I want to play, but I don't want to be sitting here in front of my computer all fucking day playing it. Stupid. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. And you can even plug in a mouse and a keyboard into a Steam Deck and, and play them off your TV. It's fucking badass. Oh, really? Yeah. That's dope. So you don't have to play with the controller. You can get your keyboard and mouse and still play that way. I have I have one somewhere. I just need to find it. Cause I I totally don't want to sit in in my office chair and play games. I'd rather sit on my big ass couch. Right, and I'd rather sit or be in my room where we have this free new fucking fifty five inch Samsung TV and just play until I fall asleep. You know. There you go. That's how I want to do it. Gina still got a 3DO? You bullshitting. I never no played. Way. I remember back then, you know, it was all like you either had a Sega Genesis or you had a fucking Super Nintendo, whatever stuff. But there was all these others. You would you look through the gaming formers and you see all these other crazy new uh, systems. And you're like, 
I want to play this. I knew one person on my block that had a Turbo Graphics 16. Oh shit. And I was fascinated by this. I was like, what the fuck? And I saw them play like once. And I so wanted to check it out myself. Excuse me. Turbo Graphics 16. That's crazy. My mom dated this guy that had a 3DO and it was like all he ever talked about. Didn't 3DOs have all those like Mortal Kombat wannabe games? Yeah. Like weird fighting games. <laughs> Psychic Detective? Yeah, let me get you a 3DO then. There you go. How old am I? Word? I am. We're old. Yeah, I'm I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. How old do you think I am? That's, That's the question. question. That's the question. How old do you think I am? Do not be fooled with a picture of the pop figures all behind me and that one freaking My Hero Academia figure right there posing. How old do you think I am? Diabetes says, remember you know Linux handheld was you know, supposed to be the game gear and wasn't even close. I, is it is it messed up that when I speak about a movie or something and these people around me are like, what? Or I never seen that or I don't get the reference that it pisses me off and I expect everybody to know. <laughs> That's why I hardly talk. People always that you say. They'll come up to me. You're so quiet. I'm like. One, you're not going to get what I have to say. Two, you probably can't hear me. <laughs> Three, you're not talking about anything that I give a shit about. But yeah, I, I know how you feel. They're not going to get through your references. And it's just, I just expect, like, especially if I can tell one coworker, like, doesn't watch anything at all, you know? I'm like, what? Like what the like I don't understand a life where you don't watch movies and shows, you know, because that was my life, and I feel like that's our form of best of uh, entertainment. You know, I can understand if you don't play games. I'm like, all right, fine, you don't play games, whatever. But you don't like sometimes just kick back and be like, all right, I want to watch this movie again and again. I am not forty, almost there. Danny's right, I'm thirty seven, but he probably cheated because he probably knows me more than you. And yes, I am talking about Mac. I mean, I've been there. You know, I haven't been there because the 70s is when those consoles really started, <laughs> right? But I've yeah. been there when it was like Nintendo and then Sega Genesis and so forth and so forth. I've seen the evolution and it's freaking crazy. It's even crazier that you think about like just 10 years ago, technology was really lower than what it is right now. You know what I'm saying? Like you could see something where uh, a movie or a show and it's not that long ago and they have like really, really old phones. And you're like, wait a minute, but that was just like mm -hmm. less than 10 years ago. And we're already advanced with these fucking, you know, slim freaking light shit that just does everything. I was thinking about that watching uh, Sons of Anarchy again. I was like, you know, this show is not that old, but them phones are old as fuck. Old as hell. <laughs> They're all clamshell. Same thing with Breaking Bad. Like, nobody in their, in their shows has a smartphone. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't smart yet. I look at my phone, and the camera, the recording... Is better than the fucking Canon camera I bought. And, I, and then I think back and I'm like, why the fuck did I buy this? You know? If I waited a couple more years, I would have had a fucking really hand... Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out here. I totally don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about how this phone... Is more convenient than carrying a camera. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Like if I had just waited a couple years, I would have had a more convenient thing. Like if I had this back then when I was filming stuff, 
that's why I kind of, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, you know, hating that this generation gets all this stuff. When my generation, you have to really like, we were coming up with the newest technology. You know, the all spark was just grabbed by the government. The technology was getting made slowly, mm-hmm. according to <laughs> the Transformer movies. But now you could do so much with just this one little phone. And back then, I had to get like my first camera was like you know a little VHS C shit, and then there was the freaking uh, handheld. I had the. My fa- actually, this was my favorite. It was the real big one that actually recorded on tape on VHS tapes? Oh my god! I recorded yeah. all my wrestling, uh, basement wrestling on that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I did recorded all of them on that shit, and it, I loved it. It's just that big feel, and it was really good. It was cool, and then you could actually play movies off of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was the best. It was the best. If now I could get my hands on one, I would, without a without a doubt. Now you could film a whole movie with your phone. Yep, do all this crazy cool shit with it and the special effects and whatnot. Editing. And you could play retro games on it. <laughs> all the retro you and want. Come right back around. Yep. Thank you for following us at Magnolia Overdrive. But do you always have your car in overdrive? I do. Always. Always. I don't have overdrive. I just have D. D's nuts. D's <laughs> you left it <laughs> wide open. <laughs> oh, wow. I had to go in for the kill. It's going in. I gotta get that one. Acid exposure. That one's for Gina. That's sexy. <laughs> lens flare, lens flare. Hell yeah, I could get my JJ Abrams on with this fucking phone. Hell yeah. I'm making my next. I'm making the next Star Trek movie with this phone. All the lens of flares. I remember what my way intro it was that I made. All I remember is it had red letters. But then I did like a lens flare that went all the way around the room. So you were inspired by J.J. Abrams. Always. J.J.'s the man. J.J. did all that shit. Oh, you love this podcast? Why, thank you. We thank you for being here. I know, right? I would have quit it a long time ago. If you didn't come (laughs) on here, I would have quit it a long time ago. I was like, you know that's what? That's right. And we want to thank everybody that's here. We have eight viewers right now, so that's really cool. That's all I need. Oh, Gina says the most hated retro game, E.T. It's pretty bad. They have a whole documentary about the, the effect of you know, E.T. You know where that was filmed? Like an hour from where I live. Yeah? Almogordo, where, so, they, where they dug up the old Atari shit. I was That's gonna ask you. From here. Is it still there? Is it still? No, they uh they dug it all up, and the city took most of it and sold it. To who? Like people on eBay, like whoever wanted to buy it. People wanted to buy it. Yeah, people wanted those old Atari tapes. Jeez. Well, the you know, that, there you go, man. If someone if someone kept that shit way back then. They can make money now. It was sitting under like concrete for like 30 years. <laughs> and they just dug it up and handed them out. They just unleashed hell on earth. They sh- <laughs> you know what? That's when everything went to hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they took out the E.T. games. They should have yeah. left that shit buried. That's when COVID came. That's when motherfucking people started dying. It fucked everything up. And speaking of ET, it was funny. Is um, and this goes back to retro stuff and retro coming back. Um, they did that uh, Rescue Rangers movie. Yes. And it's really really funny actually. And I don't even think you need to have grew up with Rescue Rangers to dig the movie because yes, there's a lot of rev- but there's a lot of cameos to other things in it. Like you see uh someone from South Park, and you see um, it's kind of like. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you know, like the this yeah. era of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I so, saw it had Ugly Sonic. 
Yeah, and that is fucking like he stole the whole show. And a uh, little trivia, if they couldn't get their hands on the ugly Sonic, it was going to be Jar Jar Binks. Ooh, <laughs> that would have been epic. <laughs> yeah. So going to that and I try to remember why. Ah, uh, shit. Why was I going to that? Fuck. Fuck. I forgot why I was going to that. Something led to it. Something in the chip in their movie. What were we talking about before I went there? Um, E.T., Atari. There it is. E.T., that's it. So, in the Chip and Dale movie, there's a scene where uh, Chip is walking around and there's a big billboard and it says <laughs> E.T. versus Batman, Dawn of Justice. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he goes home and he's watching it. It's a scene where, like, Batman's over Superman, but instead it's E.T., <laughs> And, he was, and then he's like, hey, you know what? This is not a bad movie at all. <laughs> and then the internet has been going like, yo, we want this E.T. versus Batman movie. <laughs> oh, my God. Now so I have funny. to see it. It's so funny. E.T. coming back. Why it is came... Chip and Dale animated differently, though? You got to see the movie. Didn't one of them go through like a 3D animator? See, even she knows. Yeah. There you go. Why didn't they both do it? Because Chip, they they separated. You know, Dale Dale wanted to go do another show, and he didn't feel like he was like taken seriously in the show, or whatever. Appreciated. He didn't feel like he was being appreciated when he left. It killed the show, and they went their separate ways. So Dale was all about like trying to you know, reboot and chip was living his life. He was selling insurance and Dale in order for the reboot, he went through the CGI surgery, you know, but Dale is just still plain and still legit cartoon. So that's why they still, that, that's why one is still cartoon. The other one's CGI. Wow. Yeah. But then there's a big, like, it's a real good fucking story about it. it I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, it's, it's a good little crime, funny story. It's creative. It's creative as fuck. I found it hilarious. I was surprised how funny it was. Yeah, but as people say, don't you like everything? Not the King of Fighter movie. I also <laughs> didn't like uh, what's that Oprah? Liam Neeson one where he they advertised it like he was fighting the wolves and he didn't fight a damn wolf at all. Oh, the Greys. The Greys. I don't like. Um, Something else, something else, something else, something oh, else. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, we talked about this. How you know, I like Pig was cool, but I ended up like really disappointed because I thought he was gonna go around beating ass for his pig. Uh, I, I, I like also, that screen yeah, like I don't hate it, it's just I was disappointed in it, so that's why it's not one of the like it's not my go to like Nicolas Cage movie. Um, it's something. The Point Break remake. I didn't even give it a chance. Oh, no, I didn't give it a chance at all. Bullshit, I bullshit. I gave it a chance. Crap. No, no, no. I gave it a chance. Maybe ten, fifteen, maybe twenty minutes top before I was like, nah, I'm not gonna keep watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you see, I there's stuff I don't like. <clears throat> You want to know what movie I did that with? Uh, it's it's going to make me... It's going to, like, age me. But whenever uh, Batman and Robin came out for pay-per-view, so I had to ask my mom, like, you know, hey, can I get this for pay-per-view? So our thing was, back then, we used to get movies on pay-per-view and then record them on VHS tapes. Hell yeah. So I'm recording Batman and Robin... About 20, 30 minutes into it, I realized how awful it is. So I stopped recording it, <laughs> and then I give it about another 15 minutes, and then I just turn the channel. <laughs> like, okay, this is terrible. So it paid for nothing? <laughs> paid for nothing. Terrible fucking movie. Oh, shit. Diabetes talk about the Total Recall remake. The Total Recall remake. Don't hate it. It is not better than the original, of course. Of course. I don't hate it, though. 
Is it something that I'll go, like, if I see it there and I'll be like, yo, I got to watch this again? No. With that being said, is it something that I own? Yes. No. Really? I do own the movie because I'm like, I'm a collector. So if I have the original, I want to have the remake there as well. You're braver than me. I, I do things. I also like to collect every comic book movie. So even if it's really bad. No, <laughs> that's bullshit because I won't buy the King of Fighter movie. Do you have the Dolph Lundgren Punisher? Yes, on DVD. Nice. I have that. Nice. I do have that one. The only re- remake I've liked in recent memory was Dread. See, I didn't like Dread. I felt like the movie didn't have a beginning or an ending. It just kind of starts, and then it just kind of ends. It was uh, basically the raid, but with just Dread. It was great, though. I, I, I loved it. Because I think we loved it because it was more... Dread. <laughs> it was more serious. Yeah. Yeah. I but not not not. I'm I'm not knocking the written. I mean, I love Sylvester Stallone's. Oh my god, Judge that Dread. Phenomenal. I can, you know, I can watch it all the fucking time. And that's that's because of Armand Asante, boy. That motherfucker yes. stole, he stole the movie. Stole the fucking movie. Yeah. yeah. Jinx. I don't. <laughs> I owe you a Pepsi. Yes. I. Don't watch. I don't watch it thinking about like, man, I want to see Sylvester Stallone or man, I want to see what the fuck is this guy's name? Uh, Rob Schneider, because he was added to like everything back then. Like, no, that's the, I, that's the only beef I have with that movie is Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider was just added to everything. You know, it was not until like maybe last year, or the year before that I found out he's like actually Filipino. Is he really? Yeah, he's like half Filipino. Oh, wow. And that shit made sense to me now. Why he wasn't surf ninjas? Cause for the life of me, I didn't understand why this white boy wasn't surf ninjas. I just thought, oh, okay, I guess they just got a white friend, and he was just in there. But now that I know that he's actually half Asian, it all fucking made sense to me. That would have been nice to have known growing up. Wow, that's like mind blowing. Like so many things make sense now. So that's like knowing that uh, Lou Diamond Phillips is Filipino, but he's an honorary uh, Native American. And and Mexican now, too. And Mexican, yeah. La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people, you know, I talked about that, like how I get mad if they have another nationality playing a nationality. When it comes to like Doctor Strange 2, I'm a little irked that. They have a Mexican American playing a character that in the comic books, even though not from Puerto Rico, but is portrayed as a Puerto Rican. And it kind of hurt me because, you know, I just want like my nationality to actually be played by my nationality. I want some representation, you know, stuff like that. But Mm -hmm. there are some people that you could think about that will represent you and you'll be like, yeah, you did us great. And, you know, you got, like, Al Pacino, who did Cubans. You got Razor Ramon, who played a fucking Latino, too. I guess he was Cuban as well. You got your boy, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, who did La Bamba. You know who I love that represents Irish people, even Uh, though he's Scottish? uh, Uh, Sean Connery? Tommy Tommy Flanagan. Yes. And Braveheart played a... I think he played an Irishman. Him and um, Brendan... Frazier? Oh, no, not Brendan <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> Willem Dafoe was a Mexican in Once Upon a Time in Mexico. <laughs> and that was fantastic. Who's that one woman who played an Irish lady in Titanic and played a Latino in Aliens? Oh, yeah, that chick. She wasn't Latina. Raul Julia. You see, we need some um, Raul Julias of this time. Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson. He's Irish. He's one of my people's. Raul no, the Julia. girl from Aliens is great. Raul Julia is the best uh, bison of all time. Raul Julia is bison. What's like, the girl's name from Aliens? Uh, Heather Munch- M- 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 McIntosh. <laughs> really? I'm making, I'm making up names like, now. Wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I'm making up names. 
Uh, Tiffany Mixer. I'm making up names again. But you guys should be writing these names down. They're beautiful. There she is. Jeanette Alice Goldstein. She Damn. Has a Jewish name. Mad Jewish. Play the Latina. That's fucked up. <laughs> they could have given that to anybody. There was a there was there was that one Latina girl back then who was in like everything playing the Latina. She was. What you know what I'm talking she about. In, uh... What's that fucking movie? Coming Down? That's the name of it? No, she was... Wasn't she in, like, a like Schwarzenegger down. movie or something like that? Who was that one Latina, man? She was Mexican-American. She was in Total Recall. No, it was Total Recall Girl I'm thinking about. Could have used... Up. They could have used her in fucking Aliens. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, you know... If the people, if the people in the movie old can act like that, then why can't I get a role? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I could have done that. I could have played that role. Anybody could have played that role. My fucking four-year-old niece could have played that role. Yeah. And, not, and we're, we're not here knocking down the movie old. Actually, it was a really good movie. I enjoyed it. It's a good it. movie. It's yeah. a great story. I, I love the sci-fi nature of it. Mm -hmm. But the dialogue is horrible. Yeah, that 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 horrible. first act is just. <laughs> and the thing is that the, the kids, you know, like they were just horrible actors. As they got older, of course, you had better actors. Yes, but the older I, actors were better. Like especially yeah, but... when they were like in their fifties, it was like, okay, y'all are good. Yeah, y'all can stay that age. But as 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 kids, they were. What's that Michael Douglas movie where he's like angry and walking around with a bag full of guns? Oh, you mean Falling Down? Falling Down, that's it. There was the girl in that that was the Mexican girl in like every movie back then. And probably the same girl I'm talking about, maybe. Rachel Ticotin? Rachel Ticotin? Ticotin. Tititi. Rachel I don't know how to say her name, but yeah, she was the Mexican girl and everything back then. That movie came out in 93. Fuck, I'm old. <laughs> She's putting down like it's her name and then Mexican girl and everything back in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> we got a movie for you. Got a Mexican girl in it. You down? Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Man on Fire? Man on Fire. Let's do it. It was a Man on Fire movie. Wasn't Mark Anthony in Man of Fire too? Yep. yep. Uh, piece of shit. Shot himself. Yep. I'm not saying piece of shit like him in real life. I'm just saying in that movie he was a piece of shit. In the movie, yeah, he's a major <laughs> piece of shit. But... <laughs> that girl was also in Total Recall, Con Air. See, I told you. Fire. I told you the Total Recall girl. You Board, see? Apache, Board Apache, the Bronx. That's her. All she needed to be was in a... Uh... No, nah, because West Side Story was all Puerto Rican. Oh, and she's from the Bronx, so that makes sense. Oh! How is she now? Like, 50-something? 60-something? She's 63. How she look? Good? She looks good. That's what I'm talking about. She's a MILF. Hell yeah. You know who else is? Salma Hayek. <laughs> 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 Sama Hayek still got it. Oh my God, she still got it. Jesus, she's uber hot. I think she looks almost better now than she did back in Desperado. Right? Almost. Man, if I made you cry your eyes out, did it make me cry my eyes? Oh out? my God, I bawled like a baby. I think so. I don't remember. Like a baby that had been dropped on spikes. That's how hard I cried. Just I remember slinging snot. I had to get a beach towel to wipe my face. Damn, it was all out. <laughs> it was, I wasn't ready for that. Like, my mom rented that movie, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this. It's got, what's his name in it? Denzel. Uh, Denzel. <laughs> I like Denzel. And then at the end of it, I'm just bawling. I'm like, nobody warned me about this. Like, same thing with uh, Million Dollar Baby. 
I was like, nobody warned me how fucking sad this movie is. They need warnings on them. Warning, this movie will make you cry. But then that's like high expectations. You know, it's like when they make horror movies. This movie is going to make you shit your pants. And then you see a movie and you're like, that wasn't Laughing nothing. the whole movie, yeah. Yeah, you're fucking laughing. It's like horror, horror is just comedy now. They did that with the... Oh my god, what was the name of that movie? What was the one where they found the... The movies in the attic? And there's like a dude in them that comes out and kills you. Oh, the Diary of Anne Frank. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say no right there. Uh, The Ring? I don't know. No? Are you talking about the found footage one? Yeah. Oh, the Blair Witch Project? No. But it has Ethan Hawke in it. Uh, Stir of Echoes? No, that's Kevin Bacon. Hang on, I'll find it. Uh, I didn't know he's in Midnight. I need to watch that. Bada Book? Ethan Hawke got a new movie coming out that looks really interesting. Something about a phone. The Black Phone? Yeah. Yeah, I want to watch that too. That looks fucking awesome. Yeah, something about a phone. <laughs> That's all I knew. It. <laughs> something about a phone. That's all you have to say. When you go see that movie in theater, just go, I'm here to see something about a phone. Oh, the black phone. We oh, got you. You want to go see Ray Ray in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you got that. You got that advanced screaming. Mm-hmm. Ethan Hawke was really good in Moon Knight. If you haven't seen Moon Knight, Moon Knight it was. I need to. Moon Knight is superb. That was a really good show. He was really good in The Magnificent Seven. Yo, yes. Why you bring that back? Why you bring that back that into my mind? Shit. Every time now, we forget about it, I'm gonna bring it up. And then we have now I'm pissed that. off that they didn't keep it going though, because <laughs> the potential, because it was a franchise there. Yes. That's how the At original was. Trilogy. Yeah, the original was whoever survived kept going. Then you just added more stars into the list. Sinister. That's the name of the movie I was thinking of. Like the I previews for that movie, Sinister. they were always like. The reactions and crowds and people been screaming and having oh, nightmares. Yeah. This is <gasps> terrible and you can't stay awake. And then you go see it. I was literally laughing in the theater. I was like, there's going to be a jump scare here. Oh, look, there it is. Yeah, i never seen Sinister. <laughs> they also, never, also never seen the Insidious movies. Oh, they're dumb. I watched one of them and I was laughing all the way through it too. And then, what's the movie? They're they're all part of this. When I found out they were part of a universe, I was like, oh, well, I'm kind of interested. Is that Insidious ones or no? Insidious is all all a huge universe. (laughs) Sinister's not. There's only two Sinister movies. So Insidious is the one about the two people who do that shit, and then they have all these other spinoffs with the fucking... the demonologists. La Llorona and all that other shit. Yeah. The the Nun and all that. Annabelle. Annabelle and shit like that, yeah, yeah. I like Annabelle. They're not scary, but they're fun to watch. Uh, I like Chucky. Chucky's the show. The new <laughs> Chuck- Did you watch the new Chucky's no, I, show? I keep forgetting about it. I need to watch it. You fuck. I need to watch it. I keep forgetting about it. It's so good. And it it starts right where the last movie left off. All right. Yeah, I definitely got to watch it. I just forget about it. And then when I see it, I was like, oh, yeah, there's a show. I need to watch it. And then I forget about it again. Ethan right. Hawke and Explorers. Hell yeah. That's my shit. I all around the world. Movie. Rock and Rose here to stay. That's all I remember from that movie. Because <laughs> my brother would always sing it. He'd be like, hey, all around the world. Rock and Rose here to stay. <laughs> so when I see the movie and then that part happened, it's me as Leo like pointing at the screen. There it is. There it is. All around the world. <laughs> That's my shit. I had this like huge obsession a few months back to want to watch that and I found it I think it was on like Tubi or Pluto TV or some one of those I think it was Pluto TV Mm -hmm. and I watched it on there and then not long ago it came out on Stars, so I got to watch it again but yeah that movie's great it's one of the the only movies put out without an an ending it just kind of stops yeah because they ran out of money 
how did these kids make a spaceship? I need to watch the movie again. It all starts with a dream. I'll say that. <laughs> okay. And all you need is Ethan Hawke and uh, River Phoenix, right? It was River, River Phoenix? Phoenix? Yeah. River, River Phoenix, Phoenix River as Phoenix. a nerd. He's, he makes a perfect nerd. He was a great actor, man. He should, man. He was awesome. a, yeah, yeah. a great young Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. His brother was a great Joker. That's right. Okay. Let's talk about this. Joker 2 as a musical? What do you think? No. It's happening. It better not. <laughs> it's happening. That's what I'm hearing. Oh, my God. No. Joker 2 is going to be a musical. I'm just going to hate life. And or Lady Gaga's Murray. Harley Quinn. That's I just... No. How this about is all. This is all official. Why, though? <laughs> I don't understand. Because it's in his head? I don't know. Joker. I don't know. That movie was so great. Why ruin it? Because Warner Brothers wants money and Ezra Miller is fucking shit up for The Flash. He's no, Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller's fucking shit up for The Flash and Amber Heard is fucking shit up for Aquaman 2. Mm-hmm. They already dumped her ass. Yeah. But the as movie was already done filming. Yeah, as it should. They were... I'm telling you, they could just do what they did with the fucking Army of the Dead, which I'm still kind of... It's like, damn, you know? But, you know, Chris Delia fucked himself over. And they completely just took him out and added, I forgot her name, and it was seamless. Like, she was in it the whole time. And she was just added in the scenes. But it like, looked like she was part of it the whole time. Like they did with uh, Back to the Future? Who did they add in the scene? Back to the Future, they completely... Stopped filming and recast. Oh, right, Michael right. J. Fox. Oh, right. Yeah, but they reshot those scenes, though. And there's some shots that I think they say that you could tell it's the other kid, but no, they totally reshot. No, she's just added in. Like, there'll be a whole group, and everybody's there, and she's added into the scene where Homeboy was at. And wow, why'd they do that? And it's seamless. Well, Chris D'Elia was um, hit with the uh, allegations. Uh, because he was flirting with uh peoples. Oh, he was like a molester. No, nah, he wasn't a molester. No, no, none of that. It was just that he was flirting with people, and 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 one lied. Oh. And uh, yeah, he got in trouble for that, and they quickly took him out of the movie. He's doing well now, but yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't hear anything about that. Yeah, I would say. Well, this is fucked up because, you know, I like a comedian and then some bullshit happens. <laughs> and then I can't say I like that comedian because then it's like, oh, well, you like him. My mom says I do that with uh, comedians and then they die. Ooh, shit. So, like, okay. Most well, of my favorite comedians are dead. Like Bill Hicks, Mitch Hedberg, Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, they're all as soon dead. As, they start, as soon as I start liking them, they die. So, like, yeah. Bill yeah, Burr, if you're watching this. Don't kill Bill Burr, uh, motherfucker. Don't kill Bill Burr. <laughs> don't uh, you fucking dare kill Bill Burr. Lavelle Crawford, please, please be safe. Oh, there's a special right now on um Netflix for uh, it's a Bob Saget tribute. They got like Chris Rock and Jim Carrey on there. Really? Yeah, I was watching a little bit of it. It was kind of funny, but um, I need to finish the rest. So, yeah. Does it have Lavelle Crawford on it? Is that why you're talking about it? No, I just... Thinking about these great comedians and Chris Rock made a joke about like it's it's kind of sad how someone had to die for you to come back on stage and he was talking to Jim Carrey and Jim Carrey's Ooh. dying. Jim Carrey's uh, laughing his ass off. It's like only come in sad occasions and then Chris Rock goes, "Well, and don't don't tell me that because I'll kill Eddie Murphy next week so you can come <laughs> back." <laughs> and they all die laughing. And it was just good to see people get together. and You know, that's what I want people to do when I pass away. I want you all to get together and just fucking crack jokes. Oh, I will. Crack jokes. Talk shit about my beard. How I was a piece of shit. 
and you know you got all serious yeah you're not gonna die I'm all dead and your beard's epic it's not bad you know <laughs> so I have these these headphones not they're headphones but they're ear defenders but they're headphones ah so you know two for one so I can wear them at work and they don't think they're earphones um but I put one piece stickers on them I saw that and I keep getting this fucking compliments and there's just people that are like hey one piece blah blah, blah. but this um one dude he started the conversation not with one piece but he was like yo man that's a real epic beard how can I be- get a beard like that that's how he started a conversation and then wow. then segue into like, yeah, man, I like the one piece thing right there. Yeah, dude, this, this. I cosplay it as one piece and it's like that. It's like, all right, cool, blah, blah. And then he ended the conversation with my beard. So, yeah. <laughs> one, he probably hit on me and I'm very flattered. And two, it was a good way to break the ice and talk about one piece. <laughs> Regardless, I don't care. I love it when people come out of nowhere to talk about one piece with me. I'm like, hell yeah, let's talk one there piece. There you go. I'm like that with the Matrix. Like, let's oh, talk yeah. Matrix. Let's talk yeah. Matrix. And John Wick. Okay. See? There it is. There you go. Right back. <laughs> the Matrix resurrected is just John Wick woken up as the one. He just had a long nap. And doing all this. <laughs> when people make fun of Resurrection, how he's just doing the fucking Force shit. It cracks me up, you know. I love it. Yeah. We here do not hate the new one. We understand it. And we love to dig deep into all these uh, videos, like breaking it down and blah, blah, blah. That's how we watch The Matrix. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was a requel. It was a requel, yeah. Could it have been something else? Yes, it could have been something else. But it is what it is. And I fucking watched it like several times. I don't care. It was the joy of it being on HBO Max because I could have watched it as many times as I want. Exactly. I bought it too, so it's in our library. Yep. So it was a little bit. HBO it's crazy. Rid of it. You see how it's crazy how you say like it's a little bit too nostalgic, and that's the thing because I think that's what she was going for. Yeah. Like, oh, you want this back? Here, I'm gonna give it to you back. But I'm going to give it to you as what Hollywood perceives as how they do it or whatever. And it's basically just like, bam, nostalgia, 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 nostalgia in your face. That's all it was. And then if it's something newer, you'll be disappointed. And that's what's crazy about this time. If someone's if if something's made I, I like in the Kenobi show, people talk about how. Oh, it's it's doing too much uh, nostalgia in it here and there, which is really not. And then there's people talking about like, oh, it's not enough like callbacks and nostalgia in it. And you can't please. You either do something new or you do something with a lot of callbacks, you know. And people yeah. are used to these callbacks because The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba, there's all these callbacks to older things. You know, all these cameos and whatever and shit like that. And that's what we, that's what, why, that's why people are watching it. So it's like, oh, what's going to come back? What's going to be in it? But if it's something completely brand new, then they're like, eh, I was hoping to see this and I was hoping to see that. They're like Austin Powers. Well, then there's no pleasing you, is there? <laughs> I remember I used to throw that, I used to throw that at somebody's face because it was like that. You talk to them and they'll be like, oh, they always be negative, and then I just be like, "Well, then there's no pleasing you." There's people that are just like that. <sighs> Can't stand it, and they never shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Danny says, "Ari Spears has some classic stand-ups. He is one of the greats." Um, King Diabetes says, "Bill Burr, Ari Spears, Dave Chappelle, and Louis Black are still alive." That's true. Even though I don't like Dave Chappelle anymore. Uh, Louis Black is great. I hope he never dies. He's always mad, though. He's always mad. He's always pissed off. I like it. I need somebody angry like that. Uh, if you need someone angry like that, then I need uh, the next 
the next uh, Sam Kinison. Ah! <laughs> Live to where the food is. I maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do that. In my stand up, I'll just be the next Sam Kinison. I'll just have that theme. Do it. You know? You know, I always want to use the bathroom, but it'll be nice if someone does not piss all over the side. Ah! There you go. You just start screaming. <laughs> I'd be there. Literal. Can you hear Ralph. me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's like my mic's not going through my ears anymore. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, about now. Oh, you're good. Naz Kinnison. <laughs> I like it. There it is. I'm getting the fucking. I'm getting the coat. I'm getting the fucking hat. I'm not going to get the hair because I don't got it. Get a wig. I'll get a wig. This is not even my real hair. Oh, I'm not being part of the bit. I'm just so mad that I'm bald. Um, King Diabetes says, if I talk about not liking it from the jump, the cancel culture would be like, you don't like it because Trinity is the one this time. Blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. I'm not hating that. I just didn't like the constant quoting from the first movie. Yeah, I can see that. I, I didn't like the, like, put scenes in it from the first movie. I thought that was weird. It was like... Like, people say it was too nostalgic. Like, they were trying to... I don't know, trying too hard. Hey, I can hear myself again. Yeah, it sounded like a car came by and just raised your volume. That's weird. It was like, it sounds too, it sounds too, <laughs> I could hear myself again. Nice. But yeah, nostalgia. But you know what we're all about? Nostalgia, especially here in Machine Room Podcast. But we also don't let nostalgia hold us back from enjoying new things because you shouldn't. Nostalgia is something that is... It's it's this thing that triggers a a feeling of of good times and memories and whatnot. But also, we need to build new memories and enjoy new good mm -hmm. times and experience new things. So please don't get mad. There's a remake. If there's a remake, fuck it. There's always the original. Please don't yep. get mad that um. I got nothing else. Just that part right there. Just please, just be cool. There's Every something that people don't talk about nostalgia, and it's yeah, it's not always good. Like if you're like me and have PTSD, it's not always a good thing. Like mm -hmm. going back and remembering stuff like that can bring up some other bad shit, and it's really hard. Like I tried to go back and watch uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, like from the beginning, and it just brought up it brought up way too much old shit for me, and I couldn't watch it anymore. There you go. So now you can watch the new Star Trek. There you go. Start some new memories. Yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> and y'all, just listen to a new Machine Room podcast. New, and that new. means this is now going to be nostalgia for you when the next Machine Room podcast comes out. Ha <laughs> ha. That's right. So we're going to have to, I'm going to have to do like a Mickey Mouse cop. Now it's time to say goodbye. You know the rest. Where can you find <laughs> us? You can find us at machineroompodcast.com. Everything Machine Room is there. You can follow us. If you're looking at the video right now, you can see where you can follow us right now on Twitter and Twitch. I don't have my Twitch logo by my name, but trust me, it's there. Uh, if you're listening to us through audio... Uh, mediums while you're taking a shit because that's the way you should. That's how everybody poops. Yes, you can follow me on Twitter at N A Z T R A D A M I X, and you can follow Rachel on Twitter at Hammer of Venus. Notice how I don't have to spell hers out because it's simple. Yes, you can picture it, but if I put <laughs> Nastradamus, you're like, how do you spell that? Nastradamus. Yes. Yeah. So, and then you can follow the Machine Room podcast on Twitter at Real Machine Room. Also, the YouTube Real Machine Room, where you can watch this video. Although all you're gonna see is our pictures, but 
we're freaking sexy, so it's good eye candy regardless. There's the animated GIF, so it, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, and if you play like some 80s synth wave music with it, it fucking goes well. Just like the 80s synth wave music that ends this freaking show. Exactly. Good night, y'all. Don't drop a soap. Don't. Yep. Picture's still there. <laughs> Just hovering over. Wow. Good night.